Picture is an engraving of the, uh, the actual siege of the Danes, uh, maybe some years after 1612, uh, uh, when this event took place. And this is just a bit fast overview of what we are going to talk about: background, uh, the excavations, and what kind of siege-related features and fine material materials we, we are finding at this this place. Uh, most of you have seen this massive before. Okay. Please sit close a little bit. And this is a political scene at the time. Uh, Sweden or, uh, or the darker areas or, or, or the the what's this? Uh, Elfborg is uh, outside Gothenburg, uh, up the west north of Sweden. Uh, a very important uh, 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 castle to defend the western trade. Uh, and uh, Elfsborg is uh, first mentioned in the 1360s uh, and are probably uh, the Swedish uh, fortification or castle. But uh, during the time, medieval years, it, it became Dan Danish and Swedish uh, back and forth. Uh, uh, innumerable times. Uh, and here's a picture of how it looks today. Uh, it's uh, totally uh, built around and uh, you have these uh, ruins up at the top. They are trying to protect with these roofs. And here is this picture again. And uh, here you have a plan from 1657. And uh, show that's only three years before it uh, demolishes. Totally, and the new Elfsborg is a new uh, important uh, fortification in the uh, Jedi River mouth. Uh, yeah, and uh, we are going to talk about uh, one specific event: is uh, the Kalmar uh, War. Uh, it's uh, Kalmar War, 1611 to 1613. Uh, the, Dan uh, the Danish uh, forces want to take back uh, Sweden. They were in Union earlier, and that is the, the whole background. They, the Danes look as, on Sweden as their territory. And it's Christian IV, as we haven't heard of today. Uh, and here we have a Danish victory medallion, and that, that also depicts the, <coughs> the siege uh, of Elsborg. And uh, the siege of Elsborg is uh, taking place during 1612, and it's uh, victorious uh, siege for the Danes. Now we just go through it a uh, little fast so you can see what happened. Uh, uh, in the 4th of May 1612, uh, the Danish uh, army reached Niasborg uh, and uh, 200 sailors started with digging ap ap approaches. Uh, the the Dan Danish army uh, are up to over 10,000 uh, soldiers, and uh, they are eventually standing outside Esport, the whole army, uh, of which 2,300 2, are cavalry. And uh, we have also have a lot of cannons, uh, 500 iron shuffles, 300 spades, and 200 hats. And, uh, digging. Uh, <coughs> Pickaxes. Pickaxes. Uh, and we just finish uh, with the uh, they are digging these trenches to the to the to the castle from the south. Here is a high ground where they can shoot at the, at the castle. And they are digging trenches to the castle. And this is done in a couple of days, and they are getting closer and closer. But they are being heavily shot at from the Queen Clipan. So that is a crucial point to take to, for the Danes to take this uh, castle. And uh, on the 13th of May, 
and they are uh, having better nerves, uh, getting through the fences and taking a Grenadina. And that is when the whole siege is turning to the Danes' favor. Uh, and uh, in uh, 14th and 15th of May, and this is uh, approximately 10 days into the siege, uh, uh, even more troops arriving to try to scare the, uh, uh, the, the castle for capitulation, uh, which they do not accept. And uh, in the 17th of May, the Danish have dug all the way under the bastions and, and start to uh, uh, detonate their mines. So, uh, it says. Yes. And, uh, and this leads up to 25th of May, where even more uh, mines are detonated and the cannons are bombarding the castle. And this uh, combined leads to uh, the, the one of the tower is falling out in the moat, which uh, makes the castle hard to protect. And they will get a chance to give up the castle, the keys, but they refuse it again. And then they get two days, or they will kill everybody uh, in, 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 in the castle. And uh, they get one day to think of this offer, and they uh, end up with uh, giving up the castle. On 24th of May, the Danes have export. And this event leads to uh, the second. Uh, yes, Lösen. Second ransom, which are the, maybe the largest uh, sub Sweden ever have paid, is one million in uh, uh, today's currency. No, today's oh, currency. that was our GMP. Oh, okay. Yes, that we paid yes, for one year's GMP, and they paid this in um, maybe seven years. Oh. So it's an enormous oh. amount. And what we have done is just be quick here. Here we have the slope down to the Elbow Castle. Here we have found uh, traces from the siege and a lot of bullets. Uh, we have the moat, we have the bastion, and uh, over here we have some uh, battlefield, you can say, when they're taking Queen Eclipa. We have we found a lot of bullets, I will show you later on. Lots. Um, well, um, Today I will focus on what be the remains of the sappers. Uh, now we have sappers down there, you see in the top the corner. Uh, I'm going to talk about them and what they do in the, during the sieges. They are digging saps. Uh, as Tom showed you on the excavation map there, we have the features. I will translate them to the uh, oblate map of the 65th map. So you see it coming down from the trenches down to the moat. See some more pictures of them. Um, uh, this picture shows the Danish victory medallion that Tom mentioned earlier. On the medallion, you can see the Danish armies fortified camp. Here, there, down on the bottom. Uh, in the middle, there are two batteries. Um, uh, firing cannons. And above them, there is a trench running parallel to the castle. In the trench, there is a lot of soldiers. You can also see a trench running from the fortified camp down to the parallel trench near the castle. An important feature in the medallion is that it shows the batteries shooting at the southern castle tower. It's clear that the tower is soon to be totally demolished. The medallion also shows that there is a lot of rubble in the moat. There will soon be a breach. The victory is near. The siege started immediately after the parts of King Prison's army landed at the coast outside the 4th of May. Um, it started immediately with 200 Danish seamen digging trenches and sacks. Initially, the sad work resulted in the loss of many lives. It says in the source that Christian personally encouraged the men with his presence and opening vessels of Rhenish wine and Rostock beer. <laughs> After two days, the rate of work increased, as did the quantity of various types of seed works, batteries, approaches, and so on and so forth. 
Ten days later, the Danes uh, took the defenders out for a machine like this one, so a tomb, which was a blockhouse with cannons and small cliff, but a small cliff just northeast of the main fortification. From this vantage point, the occupants could defend with flanking fire across the hostile iron army, attacking from the south. The Danes immediately had it located as a threat and made a big effort to uh, secure that vital point. Uh, on the left, we have an illustration from a field book from the Swedish, um, from, a field book for, from the Swedish army from the mid 18th century. It shows how to properly dig the sap. Uh, on the right side, we have a picture that shows uh, the sap that we discovered. Uh, it can be the end point of an um, approach, or uh, it could also be the easternmost end point of a parallel. Nevertheless, it's located at the future point that we are also on the Victor Medallion, just towards the south castle tower. Here we have an overview and picture showing the moat. Uh, the sap yes, coming down from the, the heights up above. Um, <coughs> uh, and underneath all this soil here, we have the uncovered, uh, the covered way. So we have that on the picture here. Um, but at this point, it is at this spot to uncover the Danish mines. This area here. Um, we have written records describing how on the 7th of May the Danes had mined 15 feet on the rampart. In a letter from Albert Scale to his wife, it says that the timberman Sivran Jansen, who they journeymen, worked day and night in the mine shops. Anyhow, there is no information on where the mines were constructed, but it's very likely that they should be where the breach is. Everyone's going. Okay. Uh, well, this is the west mine. The picture shows a section of the mine tunnel. In the bottom front of the picture, we can see the edge of an earth slide after the detonation of the mine, which set enormous volumes, volumes of sand in motion into the moat. Uh, here we have the East Mine shown from Don and in an overview picture. This photo also shows the Earth slide. And the east end, at the east end of the edge of the Earth slide, we uncovered a probable mine crater sealed by the Earth. And uh, this figure shows the location of the mines and the probe just opposite the South Castle Tower. This location, uh, this is the location of the breach that is described in the written sources. The Danish cannon had bombarded the south tower so that it had uh, partly collapsed into the moat. This is also the location where had the mines and the earth slide. The combination of both events caused the tremendous breach in the defenses. The debris in the moat from the destroyed fortifications made for a good causeway over the moat and opening into the fortification for the storming army. And now, the Danish army stormed the cause of the breach of the 22nd of May, but were thrown back by the defenders, and there was a large fire and a number of explosions that severely damaged the castle. King Kiss Christian offered that uh, uh, opportunity to surrender, and we know what happened. Uh, but after that, uh, this is uh, overview, so you can see from other, um, other direction. Yeah. Quite extensive area to we were excavated, but see the slope here, this marshland down here. Ushima Klippa is the further up there. Um, here we found the remains of a subsequent counter mine. It was properly constructed around the 1620-1630 as a result of events during the Cardinal War of 1612. The written sources mention fixed mines as part of the fortifications. Um, this figure shows the location of the counter mines just opposite the South Castle Tower. Um, uh, 
is a section to come to my entrance and uh, the mine gallery. So here is the entrance, there is a gallery in here, and it's a mine tunnel going up there. Um, the countermine is pre-built mine gallery situated in the slope between the moat and the glasses embankment. The entrance is located at almost the same level as the water level in the moat. Uh, it's a view over the countermine from within the castle. Uh, we have the entrance. Uh, it was constructed as a small, slightly rectangular three-walled room. Uh, it had been dug down from above and therefore constructed from above. The walls were of wooden planking. It most probably had a wooden floor and ceiling. There are indications indication of such in the archaeological section. And here we have principle for counter mining. We have A, it's the entrance to the mine, counter mine. B is a, the first part of the tunnel, the gallery, and from that it goes out tunnels. Um, and they can be more elaborated. There are listening tunnels, and there are the ones that they go out and blast uh, countermines in, or just go out and uh, charge at the enemy. Uh, time's up, I think. We have a best show, uh, quickly show the uh, sound. Uh, we can take the next because we have no time. Uh, here we have the battlefield and the siege ground where we have found a lot of bullets, uh, lead bullets. We can skip this. Here, we can back, back once. Here we have this uh, a grenade, a grenade. We have found splinters of that. Uh, um, and this is a typical uh, uh, set of. Uh, 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 artifacts, lead bullets from uh, pistols and muskets, and we have uh, we call hawk, uh, hawk killer, uh, lead shots, I think they call, and uh, cannibals, of course, and yeah, even uh, even uh, crossbow arrowheads, which are very late, season twelve. So we, it could be from the earlier siege, uh, fifty years earlier, or it's, uh, another use of them that we don't know. And here we have the amount we have found. So they are pretty much material from the siege. And the most of this material we can pinpoint down to the 1612 event. So over over 200 uh, lead bullets. Yeah, it's enough. And uh, edge of a shovel. And... Yes. Sir. Okay.